Hey, hey, everybody, and welcome back to the board meeting. Today, we're doing another R and R episode, our bi-monthly reviews and ratings episode, where I talk about all the games that I've been playing in the past two weeks with friends, family, and even solo. Today, we're talking about seven different games. I've played 22 different games total, but we're just talking about seven of them because the other What's that? 15 games I've played or I've talked about on a previous RNR, and I'm trying not to repeat myself on these RNRs. I have decided that I'm probably going to be doing a monthly recap, so I talk about some of those other games that I'm not talking about. Uh, but let's go to our very first game of this week, which is Conspiracy Abyss Universe. Conspiracy Abyss Universe is the small card game version of its bigger box brother, Abyss. In this game, players are building an inverted pyramid of cards made up of different colored sea lords that are acquired through this sort of push-your-luck drafting mechanic. Each of these lords are worth different points and have some ability on them. Some will have keys on them, and once a player has two or three keys, they collect a location card and place it on that last key. The locations will give players points or some kind of ability. Once a player has a complete pyramid, all other players get one more turn. I give this game an 8 rating and is an excellent implementation of the bigger game Abyss. This one gets a high recommendation from me and is a great filler option since it takes less than half an hour to play, but it is a great game. Next, let's go to Pandemic Rising Tide. Pandemic Rising Tide is, of course, part of the Pandemic series of games. In this Pandemic, instead of curing viruses, though, Players are trying to build four hydraulic structures that will help them push back against the ever-rising tides and incoming waters. Players move around the board, pumping out water, building dikes and ports, and collecting cards in order to build the four hydraulic structures to win the game. I thought this was a neat twist on the Pandemic series, and I say I would give this game a 7 rating. It's not one of my favorites in the series, but I found it still to be a good game, and one that I will break out from time to time. Moving on to the next game, Takenoko. Takinoko is a cute little family weight game about growing bamboo and moving a panda around to have him eat it. On a player's turn, they roll a die which will give them a special ability, and then they are allowed to do two different actions. You can build more lands, you can irrigate lands, move the farmer which will grow bamboo, move the panda which will eat the bamboo, or grab objective cards which will make you try to either have the panda eat different kinds of bamboo, have certain types of bamboo grow so high, or have some kind of pattern built with the lands. Once a player completes so many objectives, that will trigger the endgame. The player with the most points from the objective cards wins. I will give this game a 6.5 rating that I would suggest for families. I myself was more drawn in from the cuteness of the game than the actual mechanics. Next we have Around the World in 80 Days. Around the World in 80 Days is a game that is reaching for its 20th anniversary. This is a racing game in which players will be drafting these traveling cards which will come with some ability, and then playing cards from their hand to travel by boat or train, which will determine how fast you are traveling. The goal is to make it around the world faster than any other players. This was an okay game getting a 6 rating. I could see a re-implementation of this game with some modern improvements to the mechanics, a real chance to be a really fun game. It's not horrible as it is, but I won't be reaching for it too often off the shelves. On to a new edition of a game, King of Tokyo Dark Edition. King of Tokyo Dark Edition is just a special edition of the popular family game King of Tokyo. This is a dice chucking, monster bashing, last man standing, or monster. My kid and I have loved this game for a while, and when this new edition was announced, I jumped all over it. This is the same game as the original, except newer, sleeker artwork, along with a wickedness track, which will help you get some more special abilities. I give this game a 7.5 rating, which is what I rate the original game, but I will usually pull this one off the shelf instead of the regular, most of the time just because uh, I enjoy the look of this one more. Moving on to a fast-paced game now in Rush MD. Rush MD is a hospital-themed worker placement game with a real-time aspect to it. In Rush MD, players work as a team placing down these sand timers on worker placement spots to take different actions. You will have to admit patients, treat them for varying different things, run tests and diagnoses on patients, perform surgeries, and do this all in a matter of four minutes each round. And you get four rounds to try and score and complete objectives. There are also different color of sand timers, which will distinguish doctors from nurses, and each of them are only allowed to go to certain spots and do those actions. 
This is a really fun real-time game that gets a 7.5 rating from me, and it feels very thematic. My only complaint of the game is that the objectives of the games feel very samey, but it's still a great game nonetheless. Checking out the last game of the day, Game of Thrones Hand of the King. Game of Thrones Hand of the King is a game I have talked about a few times in some videos, even making some top 10s, but I've never done a review on it, I don't think. This is a grid movement game where all members of different families are put out in a large grid pattern. You'll be moving the Varus card orthogonally around the grid, collecting different family members. If you have more members of a family in front of you than other players, you collect the house's banner. If you ever collect the last member of a family on the grid, you collect a companion card, which will give you some kind of powerful ability. The player with the most banners in front of them at the end of the game wins. I rate this game a 7, and you might think that's pretty small of a rating for a game I've talked about a lot before. First off, this is a very small package of a game, and you can usually buy this game for around $5. So you getting a game I would rate above average for that cheap, and it comes in that small of a package, says they did an awesome job on this game and would give this game a very high recommendation from me. And that will wrap up this week's R&R episode. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of some of these games. If you've played them, do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Either way, I had a blast playing some of these games this week. And if you did enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe to see more weekly content from me, Shane, at the board meeting in the future. I hope you all have an amazing day. Take care, everyone.